The In All Kinds of Weather forecast is proudly sponsored by Stingray Branding, which is a digital marketing firm that checks all the boxes. These folks will put a sting into your marketing and they'll deliver results that will wow your clients. Whether it's web design, logo design, branding, graphic design, social media management, search engine optimization, marketing strategy, or mobile app design, Stingray Branding has you covered. If you or someone you know needs professional help in any of the above, here are two great reasons why you should choose Stingray Branding. One is it is a veteran-owned business. There is, in my opinion, no better way to properly thank those who serve our country than by giving them business. And two, it is run by a Florida Gator fan. So not only do they do great work, but they do great work and they're owned by a Florida Gator fan who happens to be a U.S. veteran. To learn more about their services and rates, go to StingrayBranding.com. That is StingrayBranding.com. Hello again, Gator Nation, and welcome to the official In All Kinds of Weather Season Prediction Special. Yes, this is one of my favorite episodes of the year, and you are not going to want to miss a second of what is to come. I am your host, Dustin Smith, and you can follow me on Twitter at I-A-K-O-W Dustin. With me, as always, is In All Kinds of Weather creator and founder, Neil Schulman, and you can follow him at all kinds weather and joining us today is contributor casey hampton you can follow him at gator underscore atl it is officially football season as we are less than a week away from kickoff and that means it is time to collectively put our money where our mouth is and make some predictions neil i said it already you know how much i love this particular episode hey casey long time no see how's it going buddy what up man what up how, how, how's it going look at you you know li- living the dream on a sunday yeah last sunday I mean, without uh well that's not true next sunday there's no nfl either but uh yeah hey, guys hey, we're about hey, to have hey, football my jaguars, on our TVs. neil my jaguars are playing the cowboys and they're winning right now so preseason, I'm going to the Giants game tonight. Now, uh, I guess last night when you guys hear it or on Sunday to see the Giants Patriots and I'm wearing, cause you know, Casey, I gotta, I gotta bring this out. You know, do you look like a Georgia fan from 1980 bringing out your t-shirt, man? Yeah. Except that hey. the Giants have actually won championships since I've been alive. Um, big difference. Hey. There. All I yeah. care about, all I care about is that Kadir's Tony has a good game. He's not playing tonight, um, but he's well, he's going to be playing plenty in the regular season. We're very, very excited to see him up here in New York. I know a lot of Giants fans weren't thrilled with the pick, but I'll, I'll put it this way, and then we'll get on to our predictions because we do have a lot to get to in a short amount of time today. But uh, the Giants, from like a Giants first standpoint, had a lot bigger needs than wide receiver, like their offensive line. Kadarius Tony is so freakishly explosive that I don't care that I don't care that we didn't address the offensive line needs with that first round pick. He is unbelievably explosive as Gator fans know, and he will make an instant impact here in New York. All right. To onto the Gators guys. Uh, we got 12 regular season games to go through today. We're going to go one by one. We're going to quickly break down each opponent. Um, you know, some opponents will spend more time on than others like FAU and Samford and, you know, USF don't, merit the same amount of time as Georgia, but we'll go one by one. We'll give our quick thoughts on each game, a little breakdown of each opponent, and we'll make our score predictions. You guys ready? Uh, Before we do get going today, um, just offering our thoughts and putting our hearts out there to uh, Southeast Louisiana, uh, which was struck by a Category 4 hurricane today. So we we may dislike the LSU Tigers, but uh, all of our Hopes, prayers, thoughts, and love um, are going out to um, all the people in this terrible storm's path today. So, um, you know, we we like to keep it real here. That's our uh, that's our motto. So, I know I speak for both Dustin and Neil um, when I say that. And I really hope that LSU fans, especially. Uh, I've learned that hurricanes aren't a joke. I know they kind of had a cavalier attitude about one in 2016 when we had to move the game. You would have thought that they would have learned that from Katrina. Uh, they didn't. They sort of made fun of Florida, said that we were scared to play them. Uh, let, let's not do that. If you're an LSU fan listening to this, and if you're a Florida fan, let's also not do that. It's not 
a joke. People are, are going to die and they're going to lose their homes. Let's just, you know, not be that way. So I don't want people to die. Obviously I want them to learn. Let's just be better people in that. Um, and with that said, let's go and uh, talk about FAU first game of the year. Florida is going to finally get to host the great Willie Taggart in the swamp for the first time ever. Uh, do something. Do yeah, something. The fight and the fight and do something. Uh, are going to do something. Been hopping on a plane or a bus or something, and they're going to come on up to Gainesville. So, guys, any chance you think you FAU has of pulling this out? And it, I mean, I don't even know how else to ask that because Florida is such a ridiculous favorite. But what do you guys think? Uh, I don't think they have a chance to do it. I think that uh, Coach Mullen uh, is going to have them firing in all cylinders just to erase the bad taste uh, that we have in our mouths from the three losses that we ended the last season with. I don't think he necessarily has to open up the playbook at all. Um, I think it'll just be probably a lot of wheel routes. Um, you know, I think we're going to see more of the power run game that we saw in 2018. Um, if, if I had to guess, um, and Emory Jones has a good start. Uh, so yeah, that's, I, I, I don't think they have a chance to pull the upset. I think that Florida typically in their first games will be rusty the first quarter, but I think after that, they'll put, they'll, they'll put it out there and be fine. Score. Uh, 48, 17. Okay. Dustin, let's say you. So. This is going to be a very interesting game because we're going to, for the first time this entire year, have a, a public eye on what this new Gator offense and Gator defense looks like. And there's a lot of talking points we brought up in our previous preview shows, talking about the defense and the offense. And I look forward to seeing the young guys play well. I look forward to seeing Gervin Dexter make plays. I look forward to seeing – Anthony Richardson get in and make plays. Hopefully he's coming in because Emory Jones played so well and, and we're up by 30 or 40 points. Um, and that's exactly what I expect. I expect the Gators to win by 40. I expect the Gators to put the fighting Taggart where he belongs. And that's uh, another L added to his little belt. But, yeah. How many Four. L's is that in his name now? God, more than 30. <gasps> Count. <laughs> I live. I live for those Dustin moments. So, so Neil, what say you about uh, USF? Well, Dustin, did we get a score? No, you didn't get a score from me. So I am looking at fifty-four to fourteen. Okay, fifty-four to fourteen. Okay, so Florida's going to win the game, and it's not going to be a nail biter like it was the last time we faced them. It's not going to be zero zero at halftime or to go to overtime or anything like that. Uh, but it's also not going to be the complete and utter beatdown I think a lot of people are expecting. Their offense at FAU isn't great, but I think the real thing to be aware of on, on top of the fact that Florida's going to be rusty, like you guys mentioned in this game, is uh, Florida's not going to try to make it a laugher. They're going to be holding stuff back. I know the, the last season ended in a pretty miserable fashion, but Florida's got bigger fish to fry. Literally, they got, they've got bigger opponents on the horizon – um, so I think of this game as a teaser, a sort of preseason game of sorts where Mullen holds a lot of stuff back and doesn't show his true hand. The offense is going to look different, obviously, with Emory Jones. FAU's defense is not terrible, at least not by their conference's standards. But you know, combine that with the fact that I think the play calling is going to be relatively vanilla compared to what it's going to be in a few weeks I guess I'll say it's going to be a ho-hum win. I, I think that's the way to put it. A, a ho-hum Florida win. I'll go 38-14. So each of us has Florida winning by at least 20 points. I, I think it'll be a little closer than you guys think, but ultimately Florida is not going to be struggling uh, beyond halftime. So, hey, 38-14 is not bad. No, it's not, not terrible. It's just it's not like fifty three six like we gave Charleston Southern or sixty three ten like we gave Idaho or any of the you know sixty three three beatings we gave uh, Charleston Southern or uh, FIU in two thousand nine. But it's it's you know it's respectable, especially against a team that doesn't recruit from the same pool of talent as you. Um, so we've got Florida all at one and zero so far, and next up is a trip to Tampa for a de facto neutral site game against USF. Um, 
Hey, you guys see any real problems with this game, or do we all think Florida's going to go 2-0? and I'm actually going to be at this game. Uh, so, um, honestly, I think the biggest factor is probably going to be the heat for this game because it's going to be Saturday, September 11th at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So, I think the heat will probably play a factor. I know we're the Gators. I know we play in Florida, but it's going to be hot, and it's going to be humid. It might rain. Um, it's... I think the weather is going to play a factor in this, but I don't think that stops Florida from winning. Uh, I think very similarly to the FAU game, I think we see a lot more of the run game, but I would not be shocked if the receiver core, I think there are two or three of them from the Tampa area show out um, and we see Emery sling the ball across the yard a little bit more Um because this is the tune-up game before the big game uh, the next week after this. So I think uh, they open up the playbook a little bit more. Um, I do think this may turn into a bit of a laugher just because this is the last game before we played the big dogs. Uh, so I've got Florida winning 38-7. to Yeah, this is a super exciting game. I mean, USF um, in the past has been – pretty solid they just don't recruit from the same body of of uh talent that florida does now they may recruit the same areas but typically when you're down to your final five you're typically not down to florida and usf you're typically down to florida georgia alabama ohio state something like that so florida's going to I believe it's going to be close in the first half. It's probably going to be something like 13 to 13 to 21 or 13 to 28. Uh, but the Gators are going to pull away, and uh, my, my score is 42 to 13. I think Embry's going to have a great game. He's going to run for a couple touchdowns. It's going to be glorious. Okay, so you're talking about, um, talking about guys from Tampa showing out. How about Zach Carter? Grew up a Bucks fan uh, from Hillsborough County. He's going to be making a homecoming of sorts, even though Gainesville is very close. Uh, he's going to have a big game. I'm looking forward to Carter just balling out and mauling USF by himself. Um, USF's bad. I, I mean, they're really, really bad. That program is in a bad way. I mean, they, they beat UConn on October 20th, 2018. Since then, they're 5-22. and 22. And that's in the American Conference. And this is going to be a neutral side game at worst for the 50-50 fan split, possibly 60-40 Florida, maybe 65-35 or even 70-30. So not a road game by any means for Florida. Uh, I will say one thing about them. Their QB that they have now, Cade Fortin, is not a joke. He originally signed with North Carolina. He had some pretty good offers coming out of high school. Uh, West Virginia, Texas A&M, Oklahoma State, Iowa, Mississippi, I think K-State also, a few other Big 12 schools, maybe Iowa State, but USF does not have the horsepower across the field to keep up. It could be hot, you know, it could be humid, but that's not going to hurt Florida any more than it will USF. I think this game is another example of Florida wanting to get a win and get out of there without injuries. So I think it'll be a kind of like South Carolina last year and that Florida will build up a nice lead. Uh, and then they'll just stop trying and they'll run the whole second half clock out. So I'll say Florida wins 35-13. So now we've all got Florida 2-0. and We all agree so far. Here's where we might start to deviate from each other. Alabama, big bad Bama, the team that we took down to the wire last year. Could have beaten if a few things had gone our way. Didn't. We lost by six. Rematch time in Gainesville. Guys, what do we think? I'm going to let Dustin go first on this one. Uh, Pollyanna oh, of the show, Dustin. Let's go. Let's see. Oh your... man, I wanted to go last on this one, but I, I guess I'll go. So, Florida and Alabama. So many storylines entering this game, and we're also looking at a rematch of last year's SEC championship game, a game that Florida very well could have won. Did they win? Of course they didn't win. Were they the better team in that game? Of course they weren't the better team in that game. But on any given day, it's college football, and the Gators could, the Gators can beat Bama. It's not a matter of if they can beat Bama, it's a matter of when they beat Bama. Unfortunately, 
in this preseason episode of this podcast, I cannot pick the Gators to beat Bama. I think while our defense is going to be improved, I also think that Bama's defense is going to be improved. And I just, I just don't have enough information and enough confidence in the total body of work of the Florida Gators to, to see us pull the upset. So while my opinion may be different in our pregame episode coming into game week for Alabama, I'm going to have to pick the, the, uh, the rolling tide, the fat elephants, the crimson elephants, whatever you want to call them. Um, I'm going to pick them to win 37 to 30. So that's a loss for the Gators, uh, 30 to 37. I'm going to go with Coach Spurrier. I think we pull the upset. I think we pull the upset because this is Bryce Young's first road start. Uh, this is really going to be the first real challenge that they have uh, that Alabama will face because I don't think Miami is going to present any form of a challenge to them. Uh, then they play Mercer, um, or excuse me, Southern Miss, and then uh, they come to the Swamp. I think this is – the Swamp will be packed out, and this will be the first time since 2019 it will be packed out. It will be a national spotlight 330 game. I think Todd Grantham play – he has his players play for his life and his career um, because both of them are on the line. Uh, and I think Florida actually takes them down. Um, and I think it will come off uh, the foot of our new kicker. Uh, since Evan McPherson went off to the NFL, uh, I think it will come off the foot of our kicker and we win 37-34. Chris Howard, game winner. I like the call. Um, so I'm going to – I'm just going to elucidate my shock that Dustin is going to be the least optimistic about this game of all three of us. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and call this the biggest game that Dan Mullen has ever coached. And why? It's because this is the first true test he has ever had at the University of Florida with no shortage of what I'd like to call logo power, meaning you know, you go into a, rec- a recruit's house with a polo with your school's logo and the kid goes, wow, Florida, it's Florida. Guys, Florida is in my house. Like kind of that wow factor that can get recruits starstruck. Basically, as folks on Twitter say, a logo that holds weight, meaning not Mississippi State, where you kind of recruit with handcuffs on due to the program's lack of prestige and, you know, LSU and Alabama and Florida and even Ohio State coming down to raid the state of any talent that they might want. So the first time Dan Mullen will ever be the head coach in a football game at the University of Florida, where he will have his handpicked, specifically recruited, personally signed quarterback against an SEC opponent. Like, this is it. This is your shot. You've coached games with Kyle Trask and Felipe Franks. Good quarterbacks, especially Trask. Not your guys. You coach Dak Prescott and Chris Relf and Nick Fitzgerald at Mississippi State. Decent QBs, given those recruiting handcuffs you have. But those are the best guys you could get. Now there are no limits at all. This is it. This is the guy that you flipped from Ohio State against an SEC opponent for the first time ever. And then there's the other side. Alabama, of course. They're loaded. John Mechie is going to be a battle for Kyer Elam to cover. Bryce Young is untested. It is his first start in the swamp. It is his first start on the road in a hostile environment, but he's undoubtedly talented. And I think that Nick Saban and his offensive staff are going to have a very precise game plan to get him warmed up and into a rhythm before they start asking him to do too much. Alabama's defense, not quite what they used to be, obviously these days, but still loaded with speed and strength. So, on paper, Bama's the better team, but as, as they this, always are. Yeah, but I said this before, and I'll say it again: history doesn't guarantee a future, but those who fail to remember it are doomed to repeat it. And history says that the year after Alabama wins a national title, the exception being eleven and twelve when they went back to back, they come back down to earth, and there's a game or two that goes away it shouldn't. And because Alabama loses a lot, they lose. Mac Jones, Najee Harris, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddell, Landon Dickerson. I mean, they lose so much talent. I think this is it. It's early, and they're still going to be trying to figure stuff out. They are the better team, as I mentioned, but 
Mullen has been planning for this game all offseason. He's going to have his team ready. He usually does for top 10 opponents in the Swamp. You'll see LSU in 18 and Auburn in 19. And the Swamp's going to be ready. I'm going to be there. It'll be my first game since the 2019 Orange Bowl. I think Florida pulls it off. I'm going to say Florida wins 41-34 to 34 on a late touchdown from Emory Jones to Justin Shorter. So Casey and I have Florida 3-0. and oh, Dustin's got them 2-1. and one. How about that? Would not have predicted that. Um, so what is that score again, Neil? 41, if this happens, 34. if this I just happens, I want to make sure I heal that right. Forty-one to thirty-four. Yep. Oh if, my! If, if if this happens, Florida goes in the top ten. They're if the not top the top five. five. Well, the top five. They be, they, they start three and zero. Oh, they're going to the top five. No, if they beat Bama, they're not, they're probably top three. I mean, they're they're thirteen now. Uh, a couple teams ahead of them are going to lose their first two games. I mean, Clemson or Georgia, somebody has yeah. to. Yeah, Notre Dame. I could see them losing to FSU. I don't think Notre <laughs> Dame is good. FS, FSU is not good, but Notre Dame is not either. <laughs> Notre, Notre Dame has lost a lot of talent, so they they could. Um, but anyway, Tennessee. I've got Florida three zero. Casey's got Florida three zero. Dustin's got Florida at two and one. Guys, do we give Florida another win here? I'm going to make it real quick. Tennessee's a mess. I think their defense is probably going to be the worst Tennessee defense that we've seen in our lifetime, and that, that's saying something. Um, I think their offense is going to be better, A, because I just don't think it can get much worse. Um, their quarterback, Brian Maurer, who uh, tried to troll me on Twitter, uh, transferred out. So happy trails there, Brian. Um, but I, I, their defense is porous. Um, I think particularly in their secondary – I think this is a game where Florida doesn't have to run the ball until the third quarter, that it will just be the offense can just throw the ball wherever they want to go. I think this will probably set a record for a number of first downs um, in a football game that Florida plays. Um, So I'm going to say Florida wins 45-21. I agree 100% with Casey. This Tennessee team looks disgusting, especially on defense. There is talent there, but – they're a bit to coaching change, and it's going to be a very difficult season for the Volunteers. And part of that difficult season includes getting uh, the beat down from the Gators. And I'm picking the Gators to win 54 to 24. Um, I do think that the Volunteers get a couple late scores when our secondary, or, or I should say our, our second string is in. Um, but yeah, uh, Gators will win 54 to 24. And that would make 15 out of the last 16. No, that's already 15 of the last 16. So this would be 16 of the last 17. Yep. No. Because we beat them 11 straight from 05 to 15, lost 16, and then we won four straight, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it's already 15 of the last 16. Um, Let's take a second to uh, acknowledge the fact that this rivalry or lack thereof, this series could be on its way out. Because if the SEC, when they accept Texas and Oklahoma, go to four four-team divisions, which would be the way to make a more congruent schedule, Florida and Tennessee might not be in the same four-team division. So we got to savor every minute of this series while we've got it. And I'm, I'm the first to say that, you know, Florida-Tennessee is not a rivalry because we've won 16 in the last 17, as we just mentioned. And I'll mention it again because it's always funny to watch that fan base just implode on itself um but let's just enjoy it while we've got it and i think this is going to be the best chance we'll ever have to hang a ridiculous number on them will mullen do it i don't know but i think it will be a game that florida can name the score whatever florida wants the score to be it will be this is the gator good foundation game the game that we're bringing a military veteran to his first ever florida gator game uh in the swamp before he will sadly lose his eyesight. So it'll be a lot of fun. And in that sense to watch him get to experience that. But uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be my, my focus that day. I'm going to make sure that Ontario is taken care of. I'm going to make sure he's got everything he needs. That's by far the bigger worry that day. I'm not worried at all about what happens on the field. I'll say just because Florida doesn't want to have any injuries, I'll say they'll stop trying once they hit 40. So I'll say 41 to three. Neil, I think I honestly think that you you're you're onto something uh, because this may t- be the la- one of the last times we play them in the swamp. I think we play them next year, but this may be one of the last time we play them in the swamp as part of the annual rivalry. I could see Mullen hanging fifty on. 
especially after last year with – I was at the Tennessee-Florida game in, in Rocky Top last year. Their fans were yelling things at our players that uh, we will leave off the radio, but I uh, yeah, I think Mullen no hangs 50 of them. I heard about that. There, there's some racial tension yep. in there. Yep. Uh, yep. And we'll just leave it there. Yeah. Um, and because that does not, that absolutely does not represent the, all of the Tennessee fan base, but the fact that, but it, but it, but, them, it, but it is what we heard and it is yep. the memory we're going to have. So yep. I, I can see that. I think the question is, do we want to just avoid injury? Cause Mullen was on the sideline in 2005 when Tyrone pro throw just destroyed his ankle when Alabama was trying to, throw a four verts play up 31 three he might still remember that so i mean that that's really the only question i've got so all right four and oh for me four and oh for casey three and one for dustin at kentucky a game that and a venue that florida has struggled in but has not lost in since the 80s what do we think guys Tricky, tricky, tricky do not get cute do not think that you're entitled to a win up there I'm really hoping that these guys remember the feeling in 2018 of being the first Florida team to lose to them since 1986. And like you said, this is a tricky venue. Uh, This is a tricky game from where it falls on the schedule. I think this game, Mark Stoops has built something special in, in Lexington. Now, is he going to win divisional titles or national championships? No, but he's built something special up there, particularly with his brand of offense. It's sort of old school meets new school. Um, Old school in that he'll take those chunk yardage plays, those, you know, check down that get you maybe three to five yards, but he's not afraid to hurl it down the yard either. Um, So, and, you know, their defense, their defense is respectable every year. It's not something that, um, is going to be, you know, the, the, the best defense in the, in, in the conference, but it is something that I, you know, that this just worries me. I, 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 that game just worries me a lot. Um, I'm going to say that Florida sneaks out of there, uh, with, I'm going to say, 20 to 19. Uh, that just has a feeling of a trap game written all over it. So I think Florida wins. Maybe it's 20 to 19. Maybe it's 23 to 19. But I don't think it's double digit win leaving Lexington. I just don't. Because even last year, that was the game that Dan Mullen screamed at Todd Grantham on the sidelines. So that yeah, was won by 24. But it was not a good defensive game. It's this series has turned into something that uh something that we have to respect and something that is no longer a given um and kentucky has a new quarterback this year and will levis um so like i said i I, i'm gonna go with 20 to 19 yeah so casey that 20 to 19 that's a pretty rough score honestly um i mean that the offense is playing pretty bad and then we have to rely on the defense to win that one um, pretty much. Um, I, I respect what, what Stoops has done at Kentucky. Um, they've been more formidable uh, recently than in the past, but the Gators are still going to be the Gators, and Kentucky is still going to be Kentucky. The Gators are going to win this game. It's going to be closer than probably the, the line will be for it, um, but I'm going to pick the Gators 37-20. to 20. Hmm. You know? Okay, that's an interesting score. Um, that, that's a lot of points against a, a defense um, of Mark Stoops in a non-COVID year. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. I, I think that I, with 2014, 2015, 2017, and 2019 very much in mind, I think that 2021 is going to be the scariest win we've ever had over yep. Kentucky. So I think Florida is going to find itself down 21-3 or something, or 28-7 to or something. They're going to find themselves in a serious hole. And I think at some point, though, Mullen is going to realize he's got to go deeper in the playbook. He might have to get tricky with Anthony Richardson and Amory Jones and some sort of two QB sets or something, something odd, something that we haven't seen before. He's going to have to innovate. 
Um, or, or maybe he'll have, I mean, maybe he'll have someone like Malik Davis run the, the Wildcat or, or something like that that he'll have to do. And Florida's defense will finally clamp down. Kentucky will run out of bullets. And I think Florida will come back and survive. And I think it'll be 31 to 27. So I, I think Florida will find themselves down by three scores at some point, and they will have to come I could back. Totally see, I could totally see a play like we saw at Mississippi State in 2018. Yeah, the double pass. Where, yep. where Tony went to Moral Stevens. Something like totally that. I could totally see something weird like that. Something It will take something like that, I think, for Florida to win. So regardless, Casey and I and Dustin all have Florida winning that. So Dustin's got him at 4-1. and one. Casey and I the have one, Florida. The, the one thing – the one thing that I will leave with Kentucky and sorry, Neil, I think this is the game that special teams matters the most out of any game that we play in 2021. I think special teams plays a bigger role in Lexington as it has yeah. over the last few years. So I think that it did last. I, year. I, I think special teams wins us that game. It did last year with Tony's 49 yard apartment turn touchdown. Yep. And it the did fair, in the fake fair 20, catch. Well, and it did when um, he missed the, uh, the Kentucky kicker missed, the, missed the field goal. And, yep, you know, Poor. then all of a sudden, who 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 ran that ball? He was Josh running Hammond away from on people. The end around? No, it, it was, yeah, yeah. Josh Hammond on the end, yeah. Yeah. Josh Hammond running away from people. That was fun. And then he flexed in front of the camera for a nice picture. <laughs> all right. So, 5-0, and 5-0, and and 4-1. and Next up is probably the easiest SEC opponent Florida's got. Vandy, we'll keep this quick. Uh, unless you think it'll be the problem. What do, what do we think? 51-7. to seven. Moving on. Yikes. Dustin? 62-10. to 10. Moving on. Yeah. The, I will say only one, one way Vanderbilt even has a chance, and that's if Florida just starts turning the ball over like crazy. Like assuming we did last year. they don't year. do that, which, granted, is a given, is a given uh, you know, constant across any game. But assuming that doesn't happen, 49-13. Uh, to 13. Clark Lee has got his hands full up there. Yeah. They, that, that is an SEC team that I like to say all the time, do they recruit from the same pool of talent? Do they recruit from the same pool? No, Vandy does not. FAU does not. USF does not. Vandy is in the SEC technically. Uh, they are a powerhouse in baseball. They do recruit whoever they want in that sport. They're not but, bad in basketball. I mean, they're not nah, great, but they're not nah, bad. No, they're not. So, Neil, what was your score? 49-13. And moving on. Next up is the first – non-Alabama challenge we're going to have, and that is the revenge game in Death Valley against LSU. We all know what happened last year. Marco Wilson was a moron, but the team did not come ready to play before that happened. It never should have come down to that. Two things can be true at the same time. He was an idiot. The team wasn't prepared. Both true. Anyway, rematch. What do we think, guys? Y'all, I think we win. I think we win because I think Grantham grows up and realizes that he just can't send corner blitzes at Max Johnson or whoever is under center uh, for LSU. Uh, I don't think it is a blowout as this series is never a blowout. Um, I think the last blowout was what, 2011? When they beat us, what was it, 41-11? That's right. Yeah, so I was there for that. That was not fun. Um, But – I think this is a good redemption game. I think LSU is going to be the team that is cocky because all we're going to see all week is Marco Wilson throwing that shoot. That is all we're going to see. The I think the over-under that they play that during the game is probably going to be at 30. Uh, I think that motivates the Gators. Uh, and I've got us winning 24 to 20. It's kind of a low-scoring game. As I'm, they normally are. I'm going to call this one as a shootout. I think the Gators have a very tough battle ahead of them in Death Valley. Um, LSU is going to play inspired. Um, even I, I believe that this is going to be the game that LSU wears the little little helmet stickers commemorating the, the uh, hurricane. But I don't think that LSU has enough – to fend off Emory Jones and the improved receiving core. I think Emory Jones and Justin Shorter and Jacob Copeland and, and Keon Zipper have an incredible game. And I, there's a statement that I heard tit for tat. Um, kind of weird to say, 
But I think the Gators are going to do that, and the Gators are going to win a shootout 42-37. to 37. Tit for tat. So you think uh, Eli Ricks throws his shoe? <laughs> um, maybe. Just maybe. No, oh, 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 Neil. Neil, we have a special guest. Oh, are you talking about my Tigers? What you talking about my Tigers for? Edwards run. We're going to find out exactly how much patience – that that national championship and the win over Florida last year bought him. Um, they're not, they're going to be better than they were last year. I don't think they're going to be anywhere close to what they were in 19, obviously. I mean, of course they won't because that was a special team, but they do have one thing going for them that I think is going to be very, very problematic for Florida. You know, Dustin just mentioned Justin Shorter and Jacob Copeland. LSU's got the horses to stop them. They have, I think the best one, two punch at corner in the entire country and Eli Ricks and Derek Stingley. So you take that away, and given the fact that Florida's offensive line under John Hevesy traditionally has been a lot better at pass blocking than they are at run blocking, Florida's not going to be able to run the ball very well either, especially given the, 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 you know, the plethora of five stars they have in their front seven. So I think that's just a perfect storm, a bad match for Florida, and I know Florida's going to take this game a lot more seriously this year than they did last year. Uh, fun fact, about two-thirds of the team last year for that game – well, screw it. I, you know, it doesn't matter at this point. Two-thirds of the, of the Florida team last year literally did not care. I mean, they did not take the game seriously. They did not practice well. Some of them, you know, made comments to the coaches like, what the hell, you know, why are we rolling this out against LSU? Why don't we save this for Bama? Why don't we, you know, just practice? You know, why don't we use this as practice for Alabama? Just the wrong attitude to have. That won't happen this year. Florida will be serious about the game, but so will LSU. And I think that they just match up too well against us. So I'm going to say Florida takes its first loss of the year on the road in Death Valley. The game's going to be close because it always is. Um, since 2002, there have been exactly two games that have been more than three scores. And of those only in 2003, 6, 9, 11, 13, and in uh, 19, where they decided by two possessions. So think about that. 20, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 12. 10, uh, 7, 5, and 4. They were all one possession games. So we're going to get another one, but I'll say LSU pulls it out 31 to 24. So I have got so Neil, Florida. No, yeah. I got to put your I got to put your feet in the fire for this one. Go for it. So you used to say the Gators take this game seriously. Yep. And they still lose? And they still lose because LSU will not be a joke this year like they were last year. I don't think they're going to be a joke, but I don't think it's going to be a turnaround to where they contend for the West. No, but they'll be nine and three, eight and four. Mm. Do you really I, think I, that the Gators are going to lose another one to LSU? I really do, Dustin. Here's my wild week one prediction. UCLA okay. beats UCLA beats LSU. No, they won't. Mark it. Mark it. Mark it. They won't. You're, you're, you're putting way too much stock in Hawaii. Market. Okay. Yes, market. Okay. Um, and they're running back that Shamanad or Sharboroy, whatever his name is. He's go, he goes wild against that LSU run defense. Wild. Okay. I, think you're, I think you're more wishing than predicting there. I'd love oh. to see it, but I'm not seeing it happen in actuality. Um, no, Dustin, I, I really think Florida loses because, I mean, first of all, that's a road game. That's Emory Jones' first start on the road. He's played in Death Valley before, but he's never taken every single snap there. He will have started at Kentucky. That's not the same thing. You, uh, you no, said first on the road. I pulled a Neil Showman on Neil Showman. All right, but come on. Let, let's not act like, like at South Florida and at Kentucky are going to be the exact same environments at, at LSU. But all right, technically, you're right. But I'll, I'll quantify the statement. This is the first time he'll be a starter at quarterback in a game on the road in an environment where 75,000-plus people will be scoring reaming for his blood and that's going to present a very different set of problems than Kentucky. Okay. So Casey, you have Florida at seven and zero. I do. 
And Dustin and I both have Florida at six and one, albeit I have the loss coming to LSU and Dustin's got it coming to Alabama. So another game we might possibly disagree on, Georgia. The rematch for the Dogs in Jacksonville, the game that they have been hearing nonstop about getting beaten by Dan Mullen with mankind's fourth invention ever, the wheel. And that's all they're going to be out to stop. They are going to do nothing but stop, but practice topping that one route after getting shredded by it a year ago. Uh, do we see history repeat itself, guys? Can Florida pull it off against Georgia again, or will Georgia get payback? I think the game is close. I just think that that Georgia defensive front is nasty this year. I mean, it is. It's nasty most years, but this year – it's going to be extremely nasty. Now, I don't buy the JT Daniels hype because if we look at the games that he ended with last year, um, that's the set that we're deriving JT Daniels being a Heisman hopeful and bringing them to the national title. Um, I know um, George Pickens tore his ACL again, um, which – is sad. I mean, we should never root for injuries from anybody, um, but I feel sorry for the kid that he can't stay healthy. Um, but I just think Georgia has – they they are RBU. Um, I don't think there is any university in this country that produces running backs that are as successful at the collegiate and the NFL level than the University of Georgia. That's I think that is a fair statement to make, um, and I hate the Georgia Bulldogs um, for a number of reasons. But I think Georgia comes out and wins. Uh, I'm going to say it's going to be 37 to 28. So, Neil, Casey, um, coming into this, uh, this preview, I, I had a feeling the Gators would lose at least once during the season. And in my mind, I felt that it would be a toss-up between Alabama and Georgia meaning if I was to pick Florida to beat Georgia, I would pick Florida to lose to Alabama. If I predicted Florida to beat Alabama, I would predict Florida to lose to Georgia. And by that narrative alone, I'm going to pick Florida. Um, I do think that Florida is going to win, not because of its offense, but because of an improved defense. Grantham is going to be coaching for his career, for well, his career at the University of Florida. Um, for his job, I should say. And it's going to be an incredibly fun and entertaining game to watch. The hits are going to be out of this world. I could not wait for Dewan Black to make some major right type hits. He's going to do it. You know, we, we look back at some of the biggest hits in, in Florida football history. We, we can't help but look at highlights from Florida Georgia games. I mean, you look James at James Houston last year. James Houston last year. You look at the Brandon Spikes hit against Georgia in uh, that infamous game in in two thousand eight. Um, I think we're going to see it this year. I think the Gators are going to play well. Um, Emory is going to have a few hiccups. He might throw an interception or two in this game, but overall, I think the Gators will pull it out and win thirty one to twenty four. I would love to see a Dewan Black hit on Zemir White. I would just... Or JT would, Daniels. Huh? Or JT Daniels. Yeah. I mean, but really like to hit one of their running backs because that's that's their source of pride. I mean, that's that's where they... Well, make JT Daniels has already won the 2021 Heisman Trophy if you listen to anything that their fans say. But I, Dustin... All right, so you, you've got like a weird rule where Florida's going to go one and one in some permutation against Alabama and Georgia. And I've got... A variation of that rule where I'm going to say Florida goes one and two in some permutation against Alabama, LSU, and Georgia. They will win one of them. I'm on record saying it's Alabama, but that is with fairly low confidence. I am very highly confident, however, that Florida will win one of those three games. I did pick them to beat Alabama because that's the one in the swamp. So that means I'm going to pick Georgia to win this game. Um, and that is because I think for the most part, we've identified all the variables that go into this game. We, we know the Kirby Smart Team DNA. We know, wheel route aside, they'll always have a very good, at worst, potentially great, and sometimes even elite defense. And they'll always have 
an offense that's at worst slightly below average, at best slightly above average. The one thing we don't know for them is their QB play. Jake Fromm was not a Heisman Trophy candidate, but he was adequate. He beat Mullen twice. Why? Because he hit the throws against busted Florida secondaries. Dewan Mathis and Stetson Bennett were awful. They did not hit those throws. Florida beat those two quarterbacks. The question is, can JT Daniels hit those throws against busted coverages? Because that is a given with Todd Grantham. Horrendously busted coverages are just a fact of life. I am seeding that right now. They happen in every game against, I mean, really against anyone. It's just a matter of can the quarterback identify them and punish him for it. And, and, and that's every year. That's not just last year. Even when Grantham's defenses are statistically good, the awful busts still happen. Jake Fromm took advantage of them in 2018. Georgia won. Jake Fromm took advantage of them in 2019. The last touchdown literally won that game for them. They won 24-17 because Sean Davis found himself lost. Does J.T. Daniels hit those? That's it. That is the key. That is the one variable we don't know. I know we have new secondary coaches. I know we made Torian Gray and Ron Inglis sort of take the fall for last year. I'll even say I, I really like the energy we've had with Jules Montanar and Wesley McGriff this year. It's very simple. I need to see the busts not happen before I believe they won't happen. So until that, because we haven't played a game yet and I haven't seen the busts not happen, and because we know everything else, like we know Florida's offense is going to be good because every Dan Mullen offense is, we know their defense at Georgia is going to be good because every Kirby Smart defense is, we don't know how JT Daniels is going to do against the busted coverages. But I will predict that he will hit the throws and that will make all the difference. And even though Florida's got those two big-time DT transfers from Penn State and Auburn and Antonio Valentino and Daquan Newkirk, Georgia's offensive line is always going to be tremendous. They're always going to be able to run the ball at will. So we know that too. I'll say it a billion times. It's all a matter of JT Daniels versus the busted coverages. Does he hit those throws? It is really that simple. I say yes, he does. So it hurts because I'm going to fly down for that game. Um but I'm going to say Georgia will win 35 to 31. And here's, here's the X factor for me. You know, Neil mentioned, can JT Daniels make the throws? You cannot convince me that the University of Georgia fan base and Kirby Smart as their head coach, if given the choice of losing to Florida and winning a national title, that they wouldn't at least pause that this is their Super Bowl every year. This game is their Super Bowl. And there is a reason why the University of Georgia has not won a national title in 41 years. Well, but we can't use that as an excuse because, I mean, no, I, I, got I, it, I, I, but you can, too. but you can. The, well, uh, the empirical evidence is there. They would rather beat Florida and they get up for this game with Kirby Smart more than we do. It's, but, that's, it's, but we can't use that as an excuse. It's cost us I, enough It's seasons. not an excuse. It's a fact. It's a fact. I mean, if sure, but if it – Kirby Smart would rather beat Florida than win the games that count. Well, that game, that game does that count pretty much. Right. That game does count for quite a lot, man. That, that game is basically a de facto national round of 16 game because the winner of that's probably going to go to Atlanta. That's probably a national quarterfinal to get into the 14 playoffs. So that's a pretty big game. Uh, but, it's hard to say that they didn't care about winning the SEC championship because they beat Auburn by three touchdowns that it's year that these, they went there. It's these stupid decisions that he makes in other games. These stupid decisions that he doesn't do against Florida. He dials it in. He is absolutely laser-focused. And that's why I think he will leave with the best record against Florida whenever he leaves Georgia that they've had since Vince Stewart possible it's possible so, all right so i've got florida six and two casey's got florida now at seven and one with that being our first loss dustin has florida also at six and two but with different losses um no i have florida or, at uh oh seven, seven and, one. and one that's right you pick uh, right, yes. right right my bad all right yes. so seven and one now, real so, quick while you mention my name i just have to say that you use the same logic for florida losing to georgia that i used with Florida losing to Alabama. Which is? That there would be one too many busts 
that Alabama would be uh, the more effective team and that uh, Florida wouldn't be able to do enough to have the victory in that game. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very likely that that's going to happen at some point, and that's why you said Florida's going one and one in some permutation against Bama and Georgia, and why I said Florida's going one and two in some permutation against Alabama, LSU, and Georgia. So, okay, so seven and one for Dustin, seven and one for Casey, six and two for me at South Carolina. Gamecocks are kind of still reeling from the Will Muschamp years. Uh, I mean, they're they're not quite. Tennessee's level of bad I think I don't think but they're they're pretty close and they they may be so I don't know what, what do we think guys I actually like the the energy and I like the um the ownership that Shane Beamer is taking with that uh program uh you know I I don't think South Carolina is going to have a winning record this year but I think South Carolina is going to be more respectable I think South Carolina is going to be more organized on the field because you watched them last year, particularly like against Tennessee. And it was like, what in the hell are you doing? Um, I think we beat South Carolina, but again, it doesn't matter who the coach is. If you look at 2019, 2017, 2015, 2013, 2011, these games in Columbia, it doesn't matter who the coaches are because this has been now, Three Florida coaches and, what, three South Carolina coaches? We that, – that, again, I would say out of SEC East opponents, I would say in the last decade, williams Bryce has been the place behind Lexington that we play scarily, where, the, where we tend to go down by double scores um, in some of these games. In 2015, we didn't, but we almost gave the game away. Um, that was against a really – that was against a 3-9 and nine team that lost to the Citadel, by the way. Uh-huh. And that we almost really lost threatening. that game. Yeah. So, um, you know, 2017, it was just sloppy. Um, 2013, it was a night game, and they were good, but we played hard, but they still beat us. Uh, in 2019, during that tropical storm, I think we went down. Did we go down by one we score? We, no, we, we, weren't, we didn't have the lead until the second half. Yeah. So um, I just think that that's a place either the players don't respect or they don't take it seriously until you're actually in the game. I don't know what to expect out of the South Carolina Gamecocks. So Score? And, I, I, you know, my score for that, I, I'm going to go 27-19. Yeah. Um... Forty to three, Gators are gonna win. That's my score. Um, Damn. Yeah, I'm that, bad. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I like Shane Beamer. Um, I think he's got way too big of a cleanup on his hands to make South Carolina any sort of a force in the SEC East for at least two or three years. So this is gonna be year one of that. And Florida, granted, in a stadium that can get loud, can get rowdy. Uh, can get obnoxious at times when they throw broken beer bottles and, you know, towels and what whatnot onto the field. Um, but Florida is the better team and it's going to show out in the score. So I think Florida's, I think it's going to be another one of those games where it's just a matter of how bad does Florida want to win by. Um, and I'll say it's going to be 38 to 16. I'll, I'll say South Carolina will get a field goal, a touchdown and they'll miss an extra point or they'll get it blocked or something. Uh, so 38-16. Florida, uh, Samford will keep this very brief. It's, you know, we're not Florida State. We're Florida. So Samford isn't really liable to give us many problems, or at least so we think. Guys, we, we have any fears about this or no? Nope. No, I, I will just add one thing about South Carolina. I, the only thing that I have that could dictate it is – whether we win against Georgia or whether we lose against Georgia, I think the first half is going to be sloppy. It's going to be sluggish. It's going to be slow. Yeah, they hang on. Um, it's yeah. probably going to be a noon game. So it's all of those factors. I would, I would compare the first half of that South Carolina game this year to the first half of the Vanderbilt game last year. Just sloppy, sluggish, the. Um, but we do pull it out. So no, no concerns about Sanford. And I think, 
out of respect for that program since they are not even division one. Right. <laughs> Do we even really need to talk about that? Well, they're division one, they're FCS, but at, well, FC, yeah, yeah, they're not, they're, they're not at our level. 55 to six. Dustin? Now, pick your numbers. 73 to nothing. Now we're not shutting them out. Well, we'll, we'll win by 40 plus. Um, again, it's the matter of, do we just want to run the second half clock out, get out of there with no injuries because we do have two big games coming up after that. Missouri, which we'll talk about momentarily, could be sneaky, troubleish for Florida. And then FSU, the bigger game, and potentially the SEC championship, if I'm wrong and Florida doesn't lose uh, twice before this game. Uh, but no, Florida's going to cruise in this one. I'll say I'll, I'll go low on purpose just to keep it somewhat interesting and make this a little fun contest for us. But I'll say 49-7. to seven. Florida wins. Um, Missouri, it's a it's a weird series that Florida's got. Another one. Actually, like, Bill, you mean misery? Yeah, well, that that state is misery. It. it I it, would it, never. It, you could pay me first class air tickets. You could get me sweet tickets to that hellhole. I would never go back to that hellhole of a state, that hellhole of a city, and that hellhole of that stadium that is on the side of a damn interstate with lights that look like they're prison yard lights they're yeah well horrible maybe, fans maybe you're not, in a bathtub maybe you're not but the gators are because they don't have Ugh. a choice uh th- i mean well th- th- that state produced the houston's i love them and that's it i i don't have anything else that's the nicest thing the only nice thing i can say about that entire state um but the gators are going there and like tennessee this is a matchup that could potentially be on its way out with the expansion with texas and oklahoma so Please, Greg Sankey, please. Yeah, um, but within the short history that Florida and Missouri do have, it's been very weird in that the teams take turns blasting each other for eight quarters at a time. I mean, Florida won the first time they played in, in the SEC in 2012, 14-7. Every single game since then has been at least a three-score win by one team or another. And it's alternated every two years, 13 and 14, Missouri blowouts, 15 and 16, Florida blowouts, 17, 18, Missouri blowouts, 19 and 20, Florida blowouts. The last one of which was an ugly game for a half and even uglier scene at halftime. Um, Florida might have some kind of payback on its mind, but Missouri also might. So I don't know, guys, what do we think? I am going to... This game is on November 20th in Columbia, Missouri, so it very well could be snowing. It's probably going to be cold. Um, Again, it'll probably, if just looking at the slate of games, um, it's probably going to be a noon game, which does not help anything. Um, And if my prediction is right, I think the majority of our games after Georgia, I think, will be be noon games. Uh, Yeah, I... (sighs) Because South Carolina plays Auburn that day, I just it it just screams noon. Um, I think Missouri wins, um, and I think Missouri wins a because it's weird. B because I just think if my prediction is correct and we have lost to Georgia, I don't think we go up there with any with any real reason to care. I think they're looking ahead to Florida State. Um, I think it'll be a sloppy game. Uh, so I'm going to say the fighting drink witzes who he just has the most punchable face in college football. I just, I, Oh, those glasses and that God awful toothy smile. Uh, I'm going to say 1914. So you are picking the Gators to win. I am not. I'm picking Missouri to win. No, he's picked Missouri. Yeah. Crap. Well, I'm picking the Gators 31 to 17. I think by this t- point in the season, Emery um, is putting a case for why he needs to be in consideration for the Heisman. I mean, considering the Gators are at this point, I believe they're they're nine and one, and the only losses to Alabama. The Gators are probably a top seven team. Emory Jones is in the Heisman contention. I think the Gators are going to do well. And uh, like I said, 31-17.
Yeah, here here you go with the Pollyannaism again. Yeah, I, um, I want whatever Kool Aid you're drinking there, Dustin. Uh, I mean, I said on the SEC expansion pod that I think he looks like if Harry Potter got cast as Rugrat from Wolf of Wall Street. I think he's a clown. I've been very open about that. I don't think that Florida's going to win this game, and I think it's going to make for a miserable uh, set of taunts from their fans, from whoever is brave slash dumb enough to travel there. Um, I mean, Connor Bazelak is a very good quarterback, or I, I think he will become a very good quarterback. He took his lumps last year. Uh, he doesn't really have the five-star receivers around him because Missouri doesn't really recruit them, but he will make his team better sort of in the way that Drew Locke did. Um, and even to a slightly lesser extent, Kelly Bryant did. I don't think that team in 2019 is anywhere as good as they were without him. Um, but I think he's going to grow into a very good SEC quarterback, uh, maybe sneak it to the second team, all SEC conversation. But, you know, Florida is going to have a game at some point in the year where they just don't play well. They don't take it seriously. They fumble the ball. They turn it over. They miss assignments. You know, they, they get lazy and stuff like that. And I think it's Missouri because, again, like Casey said, they could be looking ahead to FSU. It could be cold there. It's just just a miserable place to play. And I think Florida is going to find themselves losing by three scores to continue that pattern. I will say Missouri wins 41 to 24. So that puts Florida Wait, at eight. Yeah. You think the Gators 41 to 24? Yep. Blowout. Are Every you week. kidding me, Neil? Nope. I 100% think it's. Gators are not winning this game, but I could absolutely see it get off the rails look, and totally go sideways. Very look, good. I thought we'd fly through these last couple games, but Florida is beating Missouri. I'm confident in that. Okay. Uh, Missouri, that, that, that's Missouri, where you get some. That's where Missouri you get some and Florida. You can say, no, you can say Florida. Missouri and them, Florida. But you can't say Missouri, you're Missouri and Florida do not recruit from the same pole. Yeah. Okay? Ooh, it's getting I, heated. With, it's without, getting heated. Okay. Okay. Without, without, and, and I'll and I'll bring up the numbers when, when we play oh, this here game. We go. You do that. When we play this game, I'll bring up the numbers. You do that. Okay. In in November, when we come back to this game, I'll bring up the numbers. But I guarantee you that Missouri is like forty or thirty in the uh, the two four seven composite ranking of all the talent. The talent and, composite. Florida and, is like top ten. And and you ever hear of something called turnovers? Which, by the way, cold weather can cause. Florida's gonna win. No, they're not. We got Mullen. We got Emory Jones. We got a more talented team. Yeah, well, we had Mullen and we had a Heisman Trophy finalist last year. We couldn't beat an LSU team that barely had enough talent to even field a team and make the trip. Big difference. Big difference. Is it? What? Is what? It what? What's the difference? difference. What's really? the difference? I know number they one, don't have five stars, but they're going to have one, a full team at least. Number one, it's a road game. Number two, you have that a makes team. it more likely that Florida's going to win. That makes it more likely that we're going to lose. Gonna happen. Not going to happen. Okay. Not going to happen. Do not have a winning record this? in that stadium, Dustin. Do I don't care. This? I don't care. Mullen's going to win. The Gators are going to win. Dustin, hey, I want let me get this you... straight. Let me get this straight. Guys, guys, oh listen. In, listen in right now, ladies oh and boy, gentlemen. Here we go. Neil and Casey think Florida is going to beat Alabama, but then in the same season lose to Missouri. Uh, hey, hey, think Dustin. Think about it. Okay. Did you think, okay. did you think Alabama hey, and then hey, lose? Hey, Dustin, 2018, we beat LSU in the swamp and then Missouri – crushed us at home and we lost to kentucky too and last year we beat hey, georgia in okay, jacksonville okay, question, and lost to question, lsu question 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 uh, who was the quarterback in 2018 oh so now now oh, it's the lead by so franks' problem and before that. you used who, to praise who, him okay who just started coaching a t a certain team that we all love in 2018? The same guy that coached, uh, I don't know, Florida to yeah, a win over a the Heisman demo. Trophy winner it's the next year and Joe Burrow? It's a different quarterback. It's a different offense. They Connor Bazelak is going to take a big step forward roll. this year, Dustin. I don't that care. I don't care about Bazelak. All I care about should. is yeah, being you, right you will about care. this pick. You will care on care, November 20th. All I care about is being right about this pick. I look at it too, but I'm not seeing it. The Gators are going to win. Okay. And Neil, if the Gators don't win, I dare you to play this soundbite. 
in the post game. Well, you don't have to okay. tell me twice. I was already going to, but okay. Okay, Dustin. Look, Dustin, I, Dustin, I hope you're right. Dustin, I really do. But Dustin, give us a full throated endorsement of your pick. I've already right. done it. Yeah, he's already done it. We do have to move on. We, we do have, have one more game to talk about FSU. Uh, I'm going to be there for it. It'll be my first ever Florida FSU game. It's actually also, also my first ever Florida Georgia game this year. Um, oh, wait, aren't I sitting with you for FSU? We're sitting no, for Tennessee. No, no. For Tennessee, we are. Um, yep. FSU, we'll see each other, but maybe not together. But anyway, Florida FSU. Uh, rivalry game. Florida's won the last two by convincing scores. We think we make a it rivalry three in a row. game that is back. Yes. Three in a row, guys, or no? Does FSU yep. pull it out? No, nope. three in a row. I think – I do not think it will be the blowout that 18 and 19 were. I could see something like 37-21, um, and we can define that as a blowout if you want, but I think FSU keeps it more respectable. Does FSU win? No. But I see 37-21, Florida. Florida, FSU, it ain't what it used to be. I could go on and on. I could talk about the talent deficit that FSU has had since the uh, the ball coach at A and M, the current ball coach. I'm I'm gonna keep him nameless, um, but since he left, the talent hasn't been the same. The coaching hasn't been the same. You got a first year coach, or first year, or second year actually, um, second year coach at uh, FSU. It's not gonna be pretty. What I mean by that is this is the first time that Florida's played um, FSU under the tutelage of uh, the Fighting Norvells. Um, it's gone from do somethings to uh, three wheelers. Anyway, I digress. I think the Gators are going to win, and they're going to win in beautiful fashion on this fine senior night, um, fifty-five to ten. Okay, so it ain't what it used to be, Dustin, but I'm still bringing a, a severed Seminole head to the stadium, and I'm giving it to the players after we blow them away um, for the third straight time. I don't think it's going to be a ridiculous score because I, I do think FSU is going to be better this year. They're better I mean, coached. They can't get worse. I yeah. mean, legitimately, they cannot get any worse. So they'll be better coached with better players, a better mindset overall, a better locker room culture. They had an offseason, so they'll be better prepared. It, it won't be the complete mess we saw last year or even in 2019. But that said, this team is still nowhere close to being ready to give Florida a fight. Because Willie Taggart left Norvell with such a mess that I think this is Norvell's first year. Because I think last year was his zeroth year. Like, 2020 was year zero. You can't judge him by it. I think this is his real first year. Um, and Mackenzie Milton was a really good QB at UCF, but I, I've been watching some of the highlights that the FSU beat team is posting of him. Like, he, he's flinging wobbling turkeys in the triple coverage. If, if those are the highlights that their beat writers are posting, can you imagine – what the reps that, that they record on their phones and they go, eh, that like, that's really bad. Now nah, I'm not going to post that because the fan base is going to lose their minds. Can you imagine what those reps look like? So yeah, Florida's going to roll um, again. The, I, their offensive line is terrible. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it was bad. I years. mean, it, it that's going to take a good three years to fix that. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and you can't avoid Clemson this year. So you can't run away from that. Yeah. Uh, that's true too, or us. And you know, again, Dan Mullen doesn't really believe in running up the score in ridiculous fashion. Like, you know, he had the opportunity to do so in 2019 against FSU. It was 37 10 halfway through the third quarter. He stopped trying. Florida wound up actually losing the game from that point on. FSU would outscore Florida in the last quarter and a half, uh, seven to three, because Florida didn't care. They could have easily put 58 on them. They could have scored three more touchdowns in the last 20 minutes. They didn't want to. Uh, Georgia last year, you're up 38 21 at halftime, completely shuts down the operation in the last 30 minutes. I mean, yeah, Kyle Pitts was out, but you still had a Heisman finalist in Trask. You still had Kadarius Tony, still had Trayvon Grimes, you still had Justin Shorter. So there was talent there. They just didn't want to do it. So I think that happens again this year because Florida is potentially looking ahead to the SEC championship. If they're in it, um, I think they happen to, it will happen to not be, but um, yeah, I think Florida wins 38 to 20 in a game that Florida goes up 28 to three or so, and then just stops trying. So 
38 to 20. I've got Florida at nine and three. Dustin has Florida at 11 and one. And Casey has Florida at 10 and two. Is that right? Yep. And yeah. right. you know, I, I will say, and Neil, I know you have to go, but I will say that is probably my biggest issue with Dan Mullen that he does not have the killer instinct that somebody like Urban Meyer did, did yep. with calling the timeouts or, you know, unless he like has Spurrier. a reason, unless he has a reason, Vanderbilt, but, so, but Spurrier at in Athens, you know, when we put half a hundred, it like, he does not have that killer mindset. And I have to say, that's probably the biggest critique that I have of Dan Mullen, but moving forward, Neil, do you want to talk about, uh, championship and yeah, let's, let's let's make some uh, overarching season predictions and guys we do have to be quick because i am heading out to the giants game very shortly so let's be real quick with this let's give sec championship game predictions cfp predictions the heisman trophy prediction and if you don't have florida in your cfp your prediction on where they'll go for their bowl game all right sec championship i think this is the year that saban loses to an assistant AM gets to atlanta to face Georgia and AM wins. AM beats Georgia um, in Mercedes Benz. Okay. Uh, national championship, even though Alabama did, will not play in uh, the SEC championship, I think they still make the final four. My final four are going to be Clemson, Alabama, AM, and Oklahoma. Uh, so that is my Who final wins? four prediction. Heisman Trophy, Spencer Rattler for Oklahoma. Florida goes to the Peach Bowl and plays Coastal Carolina. Who wins the Natty? Oklahoma wins the national title this year. All right. Spencer Rattler wins the Heisman and the Natty. Dustin, how about you? Yeah. So I picked uh, Florida to lose to Alabama in the big game in the Swamp. So I'm going to call Florida to beat Alabama in the rematch in Atlanta. You, you didn't ask Casey for a score, but I'm, I'm going to give a score because I – already wrote it out and i'm picking the gators to win 35 to 20 two touchdown win over bama to win the sec all right who wins the heisman Emory jones go for it he's gonna have i mean i've already basically wrote out the whole season so he's gonna he's gonna have a wonderful season anyway so let's go ahead and look at the college football playoff i have florida in no particular order i have florida oklahoma Ohio State and Clemson. I have Florida and Ohio State playing in the national championship game, and I have Ohio State winning it all in a heartbreaker, 45 to 41. So payback for the 2007 BCS title. Okay. Um, SEC championship game, can't go against Alabama. I'll say Georgia comes back, beats Florida. They will lose a game at some point in the regular season after uh, Clemson. But they will go ten and two with one loss in the SEC. They'll win the East. Alabama knocks them down in the SEC title game. I'll say something like forty-one to twenty-one, uh, somewhat convincingly. College football playoff: Alabama's one, Ohio State's two, Clemson is three, and I think the fourth spot will go to a Texas A&M team that Alabama beat in the regular season. I think the CFP committee will do the opposite of what they did last year. Partly because I think AM gives Alabama a better fight this year, even though Kellen Mond is gone. Uh, DeMarvin Leal is just a beast on that front, and they're going to be a real problem for anyone they face. So I'll say AM finishes the year with the one loss to Alabama, but Alabama will have beaten them because they were also a one loss team, the one loss coming to Florida. They will be in the SEC championship game. They'll beat Georgia, so they'll get AM in the semis. I'll say the Heisman will be Spencer Rattler as well. And I think Alabama will beat A&M again. I will say Clemson gets revenge on Ohio State as the three seed uh, with DJ Ungule as the QB. They will take on Alabama in the title game and Alabama will beat Clemson in the latest Alabama and Clemson showdown. As for Florida's bowl game, I actually agree with Casey completely. I'll say Florida goes to the Peach Bowl against Coastal Carolina, Florida being the lowest or the, the last at-large selection into the New Year Six, and Coastal Carolina being the group of five team to get in as the highest-ranked group of five champions. So Peach Bowl against Coastal Carolina is my bowl prediction for the Gators in 2021. So those are our season predictions. 
We thank everyone for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a five-star rating and a nice review on iTunes. We would definitely appreciate that. And if you have any specific uh, feedback for our predictions, please let us know. Our Twitter handle is at IAKOW forecast. Uh, guys, any last quick thoughts? One final point. And this shout out to uh, Nick Delator, Scott Frost, 12 and 21. Chip Kelly, Oof. 10 and 21. Dan Mullen, 29 and 9. Yeah, we kind of won that we one. We dodged a bullet on that one. All right, boys. Yeah, guys, thanks for listening and stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you in the swamp before too much longer. Go Gators.